everyone, my name is Bart, and we're back today for another lap guide video in the FIF 4 car on iRacing. Today we're doing Alton Park International. Here's the hot lap. Okay, so Alton Park uh, on the full track, the international layout with both chicanes into the first corner. Uh, it's going to come fairly quick, just a little bit of a tip. Some people, especially in real life, run out to the right-hand side of the uh, straight. No real point here to do it. I just think shortest line, especially on the sim, um, stand left here, uh, relatively fast, left-hand side of the track, just smooth the wheel. And uh, the, only, the only thing is, though, the straight is not straight, so let's get in a position where we're not. You can see the white line here coming up here on the left-hand side. This bit of it, you don't want to be in line with that. You want to be in line with where we're going to be for the braking zone, which we'll get to in a second. So you want to be going more in this direction. You see this little bit of uh, white on the barrier on the exit of the first corner, or the outside, uh, being kind of left to that, pointing towards the left a bit more to really open up the entry to this corner. Okay, so we're in fifth gear. You can see here we meet the white line. We're in a straight line with the white line. Really important here to maximize the uh, track on the entry, just the type of corner it is, a uh, fairly high speed corner. Uh, we want to get into the camber, and the tricky part of this corner is always the apex is quite blind, so it's where the barrier is at the moment. So we're looking around here somewhere, and we're going to be looking in kind of through, uh, like I said, where the gap in the barrier is on the right-hand side. We're not looking at this bit of the curve here. This is not where we want to be meeting the inside. So you'll see quite a soft break, just fairly light break there. But you, so I wouldn't say it's super sharp. It's not one of those super short corners where you just kind of bang get the car in. It's a little bit longer than that, so it's soft. But you have to hold on for it onto the brake a little bit just to make sure you get the car rotated and keep the weight on the nose, keep the um, the front of the car down, so we have a bit more front grip, so the car turns into the corner nicely. Uh, down to fourth gear, I, I tried fifth and fourth. I think fourth is just a little bit better. Uh, I think maybe uh, it's certainly on the fixed setup. Fourth just really helps with. A little bit of acceleration on the exit, but mainly consistently getting the car rotated into this apex curve here on the inside. So this is where you want to be apexing at, this indentation on the curb here, this uh, kind of angled bit of the curb. It's all very, very flat, especially on iRacing, so we can use all of it, even against this little kind of grass groove, I want to say, between the curb and the uh, inside. So uh, yeah, always aiming for this main thing is that we don't meet it too early or we don't miss it you know so if you're going to run if you run too fast or too uh too late into this corner you won't make it uh, if you find you're having to turn out then it means you need to break a bit softer or break a bit later to make sure we just nicely meet the inside uh, here you can see i'm already picking up the throttle before i've reached the apex curve that's quite important as well uh the exit here is worth quite a bit of time so early on the throttle already picking up to full throttle when I actually reach this point here. And, and in this little compression, the car will turn quite nicely. So if we can be full throttle by now, it's really good. Uh, fourth gear, and up to fifth on the exit, you kind of go over this little uh, crest and it pushes you wide 
it sounds like it's bottoming a bit, but it doesn't really stall the car. It's not too bad. Uh, track limit, very aggressive here. You can use a lot of it um, and get away with it, although I think now it used to be just an off-track. Now you will actually get a slowdown if you go super wide, uh, which is good to know. But this uh, AstroTurf kind of stuff here, even though it looks like grass, is as grippy as the track. Uh, so do keep that in mind if you have a moment or something. You can use this, and it is okay. Uh, but the track limit we're concerned with, especially in qualifying, is right wheels on the white line here. You can see just about hanging on right on the limit there of the track limit. It's super important to be on the limit of this one as much as possible, worth a lot of lap time. Good. Now, so now we've got a good exit. We can get a good run down here over to the right-hand side through that kink. It's not a corner at all in this car. Uh, once again, positioning early to the right-hand side of the track into cascades. So you've got this little bump here. Uh, that's kind of your reference for where you want to be braking after after this compression. If you brake here, there's not really any point for that, but you can see I'm starting to come out of the throttle, and I brake as the car lands in the compression. So just after you go down this bump um, is a good reference because you haven't really got many braking markers and the track's constantly turning, so that's probably the best reference you have here. Uh, now, in into this long left of Cascades, I, again, tried fifth and fourth. I think fifth's a little bit better on this one, just a little bit more consistent. Helps you carry the speed as well. Um, you don't want to... It's a tricky... Uh, balance here. It's a very cambered corner, so we do want to get in fairly early compared to a corner like Old Hall, the first corner. Um, so it, you do want to, you know, meet the inside of the track fairly early. We don't want to sit wide and then cut back. Um, however, we don't want to meet the curb. You can see over here, it's not really cambered at this point, but it is over here. So we're more aiming to meet the, the inside here and hang on to the inside white line for a little bit longer and then force out to the exit. All about how much speed we can carry here. So the softer you can brake, the better, because it's a very, very long corner. And in this car, if you over brake a little bit, it's not really going to help you. Or if you brake a bit earlier, you think, oh, okay, I can get a better exit. But that's not really what's going to happen. Uh, you'll, you'll, you won't you will be able to pick up the throttle. You'll pick up a lot of understeer in this car. Um, or you'll have a bit of a moment. Either way, you'll be forced to use more track on the exit, and you'll either run off or get an off track. So um, it's much more about how much speed can I carry? How soft can I be on the brakes here? Okay, so you can see, once again, fairly soft brake. Now we're coasting. This is what I mean. This kind of groove here into the camber, onto the inside white line. Get onto the curb. The curb will hook you around here. Just try and get onto that, and then that will allow you to pick up the throttle. Once you get onto the curb, that's like, that, that's your sign. Okay, now the car's going to grip. Now it's going to rotate. Get on the throttle. That'll force the car out to the outside of the track. Nicely forced out there. The track limit is super aggressive here. It's strangely inconsistent. This is quite a well-known one on well known one to people who uh, know this track on iRacing. Um, but generally, the rule is if you go, and this is where it's a bit awkward, sometimes if you run two wheels, you're okay, depending on what part of the curve you run out on. Um, but say on this part of the curve, if I run half the car out, it's on the edge. Usually it's a track limit, sometimes not. Um, so running any wider than just putting your right wheels on it is very risky. And certainly if you put um, half the car, you'll, you'll get, definitely get a track limit here. So, stay on the right-hand side now, going up to Island Bend. Easily flat out in this car. Well, I say easy. On cold tyres, it will be a little bit of a challenge, especially if you're following. Um, but really, just make sure you hold onto the wheel and you're accurate with where you turn in. It should be flat in all scenarios. Uh, this is your good... You've got a fantastic reference here. It's always this gap in where the, uh, you, you have the cut through. It's kind of where you're going to start turning between the, the two uh, lines. And you want to meet the inside white line. Again, this is a, I'd say there's a rule for almost any, especially single seaters. You want to meet the white line on the inside at the end of this curb. You can see here. If you meet it too early, you'll be forced wide too early, and you'll never really get back to the left before the next braking zone. So you can see here, I don't go wider than this uh, indentation in the road, this line here in the middle of the road. So this is really important, really, really important to keep our track position to the left. Because if we go all the way to the right, we'll go, let the car go wider or turn in too early to island bend, you're not going to get back to the left, which is super important. Okay. There we can see we're getting back to the left now. You've got to keep working the whole time here. Make sure the wheel's straight when you hit the brakes. You can see, if you look at the bottom left, look at my... Uh, my kind of energy or how active I am to actually try and get the car straight before I hit the brake pedal. You can see just straighten out the wheel just before I hit the brake pedal. 
And we're not quite all the way on the left right hand line, but it's more important. You know, we get as far left as possible, but it's more important that the car is dead straight just as I hit the brakes, or just before I hit the brakes. Uh, you've got this pretty bad bump here, which is quite annoying, but it's part of the braking zone. So you usually, sometimes you won't be able to just really aggressively hit peak super hard because you'll lock over the bump or just after it. Um, sometimes you have to just feed and then uh, you'll see in a second, just kind of get, get to peak pressure, but not as early as you think. And again, it's a punishment for if you're out of position and you brake early, you don't have to deal with the bump as well. So that's why it's kind of, it's a reward, more of a reward for braking later is you can brake after the bump as it's right on where you hit the brakes. So as you go to the bump, hit the brakes, hit, hold our peak pressure. You can see I actually increase the pressure just after that bump and the car's settled down now. Got the car over to the left-hand side at the end of the braking zone, down to third gear. Just helps roll speed and the traction on the exit's a lot better in third with this car than the second, I find. And I get into the camber uh, for shell oils. So the main thing here is you don't want to end up on the inside too early. Um, so yeah, I find on iris it's really important on, on uh, this corner to try and meet about here-ish. Get into the camber, roll lots of speed in, have your slowest point late in the corner, not early, because if you have it too early, you'll be waiting for a long time. You can roll a bit more speed than you think. It, it's not as tight as it looks, I think, to a lot of people who don't know the track. Um, and then you should be able to very aggressively pick up throttle. And this is a rule for this corner. I'd say do not be slow on throttle. If you're slow on throttle here, you'll get a lot of understeer. It's really, really important that you're very aggressive on your throttle pickup. There should be a lot of grip as well. The car should not slide because of the camber. So try to be very aggressive on that throttle pickup and just use the exit curve there. Also, one more note, probably try, it's a corner where you really want to try and look up early, this exit curve, because it's because it's, it's such a long corner. That'll really help you out. Okay, so stand on the left-hand side for a little bit, kind of slowly bring the car back to the right-hand side white line. Now, again, we want to be in line with the white line here. We're not actually going to be braking. Um, the braking stint isn't really mainly on this right-hand side. It's actually more about where we're positioned for the right hand after this left. And this is the first of the chicanes, the kind of combination chicane corners. It's quite tricky. The, the best way to approach it to begin with is this is a right-hand corner, like a medium speed right-hand corner, um, and I need a good exit from it because it's quite a long straight. So that's more of a way to look at it rather than what is this thing? I'm going right, left, right. It's no, it's just a right-hand corner and we just have to kind of open up as much as possible on the left-hand side. We'll see in a second. So it starts with us here, just trying to use all the track on the right to position for the left. A bit like somewhere like Maggots, Beckett's Chapel at Silverstone, but a bit slower. Uh, in fifth gear, we see braking here, off the brakes, down the fourth gear, most important thing is the as far left as possible, okay? So again, as close to this left-hand tire bundle, even though this curb will unsell the car a little bit, we need to try and use as much of it as possible just to open up the right, okay? That's really important for our exit. So, down the fourth gear, you can see, using all of this track, you will not get an off track here. So, please use this as much as possible. Really close to the tire bundle on the left-hand side. That's your reference. Fifth gear, bleed out the brakes just so you can let the car turn a bit. Off the brakes as you go over the curb. Otherwise, with this car especially, it'll kind of lock and get a bit unsettled. You'll lose grip through it. It won't be able to turn in as well um, to the right-hander. Come off the brakes a little bit. You can kind of have a little bit more pressure on just as you turn in here. Not much, just a little bit. Um, then back off again. So it's, it's brakes zone where you're never really hitting that much pressure. It's more just modulating the brake the whole time, trying to slow it as much as possible without killing all the speed and locking up. Quite a tricky corner in this car. Down to third gear. Getting on the curb. Now... Again, really important, this curb strike, I find. You need to be on this curb as much as possible, but you don't want to be, you don't want to have your right wheel on the inside of this part of the curb because then it kind of picks up the inside in the wrong way. You want to be on the left-hand side of um, the, the, the taller part of the curb. So you want to be on this red and white bit here, and you want to be facing that way around the corner. So that's kind of what you're aiming for, as close to the time level as possible, trying to open up the exit here in third gear. It should be, once again, a very aggressive throttle pickup. Uh, but it, it, it's usually about how much speed you can roll through there without sliding the car too much. That's where a lot of your time is going to come from. Uh, and then you'll be forced out here. You can use this exit. If you, if you get two wheels on the grass, you can sometimes get off track. Um, but I'd, it's not faster to be out there, to be honest. Now, you can use that exit curve if you want. There's usually no need. Stay on the right-hand side of the track. I do just for a second. Um, 
it would do a bit in real life to avoid like a, the crest. But um, here we're just kind of keeping the wheels straight, sure in the distance. We're going to bring the car up to the left-hand side of the track. Make sure we're over to the left-hand white line before we hit the brakes. Don't be lazy here. Uh, this is your heaviest braking zone on the track. So really hit the brake pedal hard downhill into this next chicane, the Knickerbrook chicane. Third gear here for this right-hander. So main thing here is you can see braking markers just before the 50 board here. You can actually brake at the 50 board and probably still make the corner, but it's very out of control and it kind of it, it'll hurt the exit for the next bit that's coming up. And the priority here, once again, is the exit of the right. Apart from that, it's about positioning before that and how much speed we can carry through this first right-hander as well. So down to third gear, get as close as you can to the inside tar bundle. Use all this curb. It's completely flat. Um, so you should have a little bit of a throttle pickup here just to push the car out a little bit. Then a really soft brake. That's mainly for turning. This is pretty much always going to be the case with this corner, especially in a car like this. A, just a soft brake just to get the nose down. Get hooked on this curb. Really important once again to get on this curb. Pick up the throttle. You should be able to be full throttle and still get back to the left-hand side white line and then have time to turn into this right-hander. You should be pretty much flat when you turn in and then lifting as you turn in closer to the or get closer to the apex. And you need to get your right hand wheels on this inside curb. And then once you've done that, you know you're going to make it. Uh, you can see it's kind of off camera on the start of the entry here, which is why we need to be in what well, feels like quite early. Why I'm saying you need to lift to get the, to get the nose in, uh, to get some rotation earlier in the corner. And then you should be able to pick up the throttle very aggressively once you get it hooked up on the inside curb. And you can run one to this exit curb. You can also run. Um, two wheels, you can see here I'm running a little bit off the curb. It's, uh, this stuff's quite grippy, and you certainly can run over it. You, uh, you can get an off track if you run, say, like two wheel widths wide of the um, red and white curb, but you generally want to try and use it if possible. Okay. Now, up the hill, keeping the car in a pretty straight line here this is the only real thing we have to worry about. Make sure you get over towards the right hand side of the trackish so we can open up the entry to druids uh get as far position the car so we can get it as far left as possible before druids this double right hand uh corner coming up here you can see i've got the car on the left hand white line as i turn in braking not very hard here if you brake hard it'll kind of pitch the car very aggressively it'll oversteer and then go into understeer in the corner um not great to do on a car like this. Kind of tricky. In something like an F3 car with a bit more downforce, you generally try to hit the first apex and just keep it pinned. And in GT, you've got to kind of um, meet the second apex uh, so you can get to throttle there. In this car, I find it's a bit in between. So you can see I don't really get fully on the up to the inside curb um, at the start of it. I kind of meet the end of it. And then we kind of almost make the second one if you know we're pretty much at it but we're not all over the inside curve once again kind of a tricky corner um to say exactly what you need to do here I, the main thing i'm going for is i think the slowest your slowest point in the corner needs to be now until the end of this curve and then if you can just pick up throttle and keep that rotation up all the way to the exit that's what's going to help you here and the exit as well as the speed you carry is important so quite a soft break in fifth just as the car starts to slide a bit, you should be able to pick up some throttle just to kind of balance it. It should be tricky to get the full throttle here. You shouldn't be able to just mash it. Um, and it should be right on the limit through here. Try to keep it as tight as possible. And then let the car out once you reach that second uh, kind of apex, second curb on the inside. Let the car out. Run the exit curb. Smooth on the wheel. Here, just keep the wheel straight. A lot, some people go to the left-hand side white line quite early. It's completely unnecessary here. Once again, like some of the other corners, like turn one, it's not really straight with where you end up. So for now, just keep the car straight. Um, and then make sure we meet the white line on the braking zone, which is after this left hand uh, the turning board on the left hand side here. Now, braking references wise, all you have is this board and this Marshall post coming up. So you're braking between the two, that's quite a big range. Uh, you know, I've said before, I'm using, I'm looking to the apex at this point. I'm not looking at a braking reference i know a lot of people rely on one you try not to use shadows because they will move um with the time of day and stuff like that 
So maybe you'll choose one for a session, but I, I really would not recommend it. Um, yeah, you're just going to have to find your way here. And you have got the grooves in the road is probably one of the best things you can do here is just use, uh, just feel a bit like we did for turn two, like where the, the bumps or the mountains are on the road and kind of judge your braking off that. But you know it's going to be after this turning board and before this uh, Marshall's post on the left-hand side here. Now, fifth gear, really heavy braking zone this. Not very long, but uh, very aggressive. Very aggressive on the brakes. Should have a lot of grip here. Uh, down to third gear. I'm always looking, and this is a big thing, it's kind of tricky because there's a corner you turn in fairly early for because if you turn in late, you never really get to the inside of the track. But you meet, you, well, you actually want to meet the inside curb fairly late. You, know? you don't want to meet the inside curb um, here. You want to meet it up here somewhere. That's the main thing that's important with the white line inside curb on it towards the end of it. Um, I, I always find the best way to ensure that we do those two things is kind of treat it like a corner you're going to turn in fairly early for. So you can see I'm getting in, again, this kind of, it's not so much camber, but we do want to avoid the negative camber on the left-hand side of the track. We're going fairly early here. We want to meet the curb at this service road on the right-hand side. This curb also helps rotate the car quite well in eye racing. Um, but the way to ensure, I think the biggest problem is people go in or find themselves too slow or too early to the inside and kind of hit the grass or the inside curb, and then they gun throttle really early and then understeer of the crest, and then maybe you get a snap, or you go off the track, or you have to lift off, something like that. So the best way to avoid that, always in my opinion, is really push the braking. So remember, it's a hard brake. Um, not that long, though. Quickly bleed out, and then roll speed. You just carry lots of speed. You want to have your slowest point up towards the top of the curve here. So you can see I pick up throttle now, they get hooked on the curve. But the, the main way I've dealt with is, I'm turning in fairly early, but I'm just carrying speed. So that the, the incline here, and, and, and uh, the, the, the kind of load you're putting into the car on the entry should kill the speed for you. That's the best way I like to um, try and think about this corner is just let's carry lots of speed in so, um, so that we don't reach the inside of the track too early. Carry lots of speed, get on the throttle, try and lock, come off the lock uh, so you don't lose the car of this crest. Let the car out there, exit of the track, then just take the shortest line to the finish line, and that's a lap at Alton Park. So that takes us towards the end of the video now. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. You can also check out the Coach Dave Academy Discord in the YouTube video description. I'll see you next week.